Hello and welcome to my channel, Danielle's Denture Diaries. I am Danielle. And today what I'm going to be talking about is implants versus a regular old school palette denture and my own kind of a way in and what I've heard and things like that on both of them. So if you're interested, go ahead and keep on watching. All right, so what I'm going to be talking about is getting implants versus having an old school palette denture. To be completely clear, I have absolutely no implants whatsoever. I have a horseshoe or floating bottom denture, and I have a palette full top denture. <laughs> um, so I'll start from the beginning on this one. When I first walked into my dentist office to tell him what I wanted was dentures, I didn't really know what to expect. All I knew was that I had reached a point where I now know that getting veneers or crowns replaced was out of my budget, it was not sustainable, and to be completely honest, it didn't make sense because my teeth were already rapidly decaying underneath what I had. So at this point, I was ready to accept the inevitable and let my teeth completely go. Now, what else that would imply? I honestly had no idea, but I had to start somewhere. So I went to my dentist or a dentist at the time. I didn't really know them yet and just needed some options. And how does this even work? So I went into the dentist, I explained my story, I got very emotional because I had to, in a way, admit defeat. And that's not how I look at it now, necessarily. I now realize that it took a very strong mental state to finally decide that this was no longer worth it and it was doing a lot more harm than good and eventually this was going to be a health risk. So I laid it out there, I told my dentist, I was like, I do not want to save my veneers, I want them gone, I want my teeth pulled, they are going to eventually make me very sick and I don't want to wait until that happens, I need this done ASAP so I can move on with my life and be happier off with my son. So the dentist looked at everything, he looked at my x-rays and eventually came to the same conclusion and said that unfortunately and sadly, he agreed. My teeth were better off just going. They weren't worth saving. They were gonna go sooner than later. So there was that. And the next part was to talk about what are my options then for having teeth? I can't not have teeth, I'm only 27 and I still have a lot of life to live, a lot of working to do, a lot of people to talk to, smiling in pictures. Not that you can't smile without teeth, but that's another rabbit hole. <laughs> but the point is, is that I need to have an option. So we went through a couple different ones. Now due to my age, implants were highly, highly recommended and understandably so. By getting implants, my understanding is that they offer you a lot more support in terms of keeping your teeth in your mouth. And it's going to be a little more effortless. There's gonna be a lot less hassle and tinkering and less adhesives and things like that. Just ultimately gonna be easier to keep. The other benefit to having implants, from my understanding, because again, I don't have them myself, is they help limit bone loss or, you know, gum shrinkage and all those things. You can keep your facial structure more, more, more than if you didn't have them. Sorry, couldn't find the word there. <laughs> um, versus someone who does not have implants, you're not stimulating your jaw, you're not stimulating that bone, therefore, if you're not gonna use it, you'll lose it, right? 
it's kind of the same idea. So let's talk about the implant options then, shall we? <laughs> so the way my dentist worded it to me, I actually find it very refreshing the way he worded it because it's very easy to understand. So the first set of dentures or set of implants he wanted to talk to me about would be snap-ins and removable. Now the snap-ins are, I get I don't know if it's, now I'm trying to remember <laughs> how he worded it because I guess it was a little bit longer ago than I remember or recall. I guess it was only two, not three. So one of them is the snap-ins. You can snap them in and out of your mouth with mostly ease. Um, you can take them out, you can clean your denture, you can clean around your, your implants, you can remove any food that got in there. You would be using adhesive. Um, to what extent and what degree, it just depends on each person, but from my understanding, you do still have to use a little adhesive, at least in most cases. So the implants do still stabilize them though and keep them more in place better than just adhesive alone would. With getting the implants, the snap-ins, it would cost about the same as getting a brand new luxury vehicle. I don't have that kind of money, so sorry. <laughs> It's a great idea, but I can't. He said that he was going to talk about the next one, but if I couldn't afford the first one, then that kind of already set the tone for the next option, which would be even more expensive. The next one would be implants as well, but they would be more of a semi-permanent type of situation. So with these ones, they would actually stay in your mouth for six months at a time and you would have to schedule a dentist appointment so that the dentist and assistant or hygienist can remove your denture for you, give you a deep cleaning, clean your denture, they attach it back into your jaw or your, your face, <laughs> and then you carry on for the next six months. That would be about the same amount as a small house. I think is what he said, and you have to pay it all up front. So there was that, and it was not going to be covered for by insurance in my case. So there were those things, and then I asked about getting a regular denture, and they seemed a little reluctant to show it to me because it does mean that I'm a younger person getting no stimulation from the implants and they I don't think they were very um they didn't believe in doing that because it just wasn't the best option for me and that's that's okay because that's their own opinion and I understand why they felt that way but they showed that to me and that was kind of it I went through my own emotional and mental process of wrapping my head around the fact that I'm going to be getting dentures one way or another. What I get and when is only a matter of time and figuring out what's going to work best for me. And I thought about it and how can I afford all the things that I need when it comes to implants. And when I did the math, realistically and still sustaining my own life as is would take me I think I ended up saying about three years to save up and have that done my teeth at this point or my crowns also were falling apart time was of the essence and I needed this done now and not to mention once I had found out what would be covered by insurance for those of you who are still early on looking into this, and anyone who already has looked into it, maybe this sounds familiar for you, is insurance doesn't always cover what it covers right now. And it didn't always cover what it does cover now. 
it's very evolving it's always being adjusted it's always being looked at differently and that was something that i needed to consider as well because something that else that come that has been coming up in the comments is how much did it cost and things like that i'm fortunate enough that my stars happened to align where my teeth being extracted was covered by my insurance getting full palate dentures was covered by my insurance however the decision would be between do i want my permanence covered in which i would be paying out of pocket up front for my immediate or i go without or i can have my immediates covered and later on i'm gonna have to pay for my permanent dentures but we're not there yet we're still trying to figure out what we're gonna do are we getting implants or not so i did more research and finances aside it's not looking good already then i look into implants what do they mean what does it look like when someone talks with them and wears them because so far i had watched a few people who did not have implants and so far that didn't look too shabby to me i did find one person who does have implants last i checked it is Princess Glitterhead. She has become very notorious on TikTok and she has also become YouTube famous. Um, I believe she was also on a TV show. I don't want to say though because I could be wrong. But at any rate, a very confident woman who went ahead and got her teeth taken care of and got implants. She made it look very appealing. The only things that I became very weary of as I continued to do my research is the fact that your body can actually reject your implants. I don't remember if it was that particular YouTube that YouTuber that it had happened to, but your body can reject the implant completely. Which means, well, exactly what I said. Your body is not going to keep that implant in the system. It's going to kick it out and say, no, we don't like it. <laughs> so I had to think about that. I also had to think about when I get my teeth extracted, you can either get the implants during the extraction process or you can get them later on down the road. So that was something else that I had to think about too. And I already knew I was not gonna be able to afford the implant out the gate, but it's highly recommended by most dentists. I already saw one comment recently that this wasn't the case for them, but from what I've heard so far, dentists, especially mine even, recommended that while you are open anyways and you're going through your teeth extractions you get the implants inserted then and over time as you're healing the implants are actually going to come up and above your gum line and become exposed and then from there you go through the whole process of actually using those implants in your dentures and i knew that again time is of the essence i need my teeth pulled I need to get this done sooner than later. So what happens if you wait and you get your implants later? Odds are your body can, are, is more likely to reject the implants if you do wait to get the implants until later. And I had to wrap my head around, I'm not going to get my surgery done as soon as I had wanted. I am going to have to save up the money to get it done. I'm also going to have to deal with the statistics behind whether or not my body will reject it, which this far in my life, I don't want to sound negative, but I have immune system issues and my body already tends to kind of fight me on a lot of things as is. and. I don't really want to invite more opportunity for things like that to happen. I'd rather feel safe than sorry. 
And then once I get this done, how am I going to feel at the end of the day if I'm going to get the implants later on or not? Still thinking about what's the likelihood of my body saying, no, not in this mouth, get out of here, to the implants. And the more and more I thought on it, it all circled back to sustainability. A video that I just made tonight, I've made three videos now, so here's to getting them all posted. But in my video about veneers, I talk about sustainability. And for me, the implants just didn't make much sense for my situation and my perspective. I already ex anticipated healing from tooth extractions being, pardon my whistling, that was loud, to be quite a hurdle. And to have to anticipate getting implants just seemed like it was going to be a lot more. In my case, I did have a full mouth extraction, which meant all 32 minus one teeth got pulled at one time, top and bottom. That was going to be a lot. And I know myself pretty well. I'm kind of a crybaby sometimes. So, again, it just didn't make sense. And the more I continued to watch the other two YouTubers, one of them is Heather B. Denture Diva. She's so fantastic. And I love her personality and her ability to persevere through anything. Did I use that word right? I think so. Um, the point is, is it matches my own personality. And if she can wear dentures like what I'm wearing now to this day, I can do it too. And I can be just as comfortable, just as confident, just as charismatic as her or as I have always personally been. So, at any rate, some other things too to think about um, for other people who are still debating because, again, if you haven't watched my other videos and if I haven't said it already, this is my own personal story. This is my personal experience. And this is me doing what works for me and my lifestyle and what I'm looking for in my denture journey. If you can afford implants, there is a person who had commented recently, they got 12 implants. I, for one, if you're watching this video, I hope you're doing well. That's incredible. The more implants, the better stability that you have. Um, but it's not to say that it's not for everyone. If I could have afforded to have implants, if I wasn't such a big baby, I would have probably opted for it as well. So, keep all of that in mind. But another benefit that Princess Glitterhead, I hope I'm saying the full name, I'm going to include it here in the video, so, um, to verify, but something that she had wanted for herself personally was to sleep in her teeth. When you have a palette denture like mine, it's up to each person and their own dentist and their surgeons what's recommended for them as an individual. For me, personally, my dentist told me that I should not be wearing my denture at night, it's not sanitary, and I need to give my gums and my face a rest. So there's that. I also hear benefits to wearing your denture. For example, you get better used to it, accustomed to it. You tend to feel more comfortable and confident wearing it because you wear it so much. And you're also stimulating your gums more frequently, so you are allegedly even more so helping to eliminate gum loss and shrinkage. Or bone loss, I'm sorry. Now, in her case, she wants to sleep with her teeth in. And her dentist had stated that if you want to sleep in your teeth, the best recommendation that he could make to her was to get the implants. So that was something that she did for herself personally. And 
Not either one of us is wrong for doing what we did. All the YouTubers that you're going to watch, I'm assuming you're watching more than just me, they're all going to be different perspectives, different opinions, different dentists. Um, so it's all going to be very different. So if you're using my channel for any kind of a weigh-in and opinion, please be mindful that that's all it is. I am not a physician. I am not a dentist. I'm not a surgeon. I don't work in the medical field. You need to do what's best for you. I hope that you find my opinion helpful. I hope that you find the research that I had done into it and the things that I've learned helpful as well. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you have more feedback so I can do even better on these videos for you, or if you have other ideas for content, if you have had either a palette like mine, implants like mine, questions about what you're going to do, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know. I'm pretty good about getting back to everyone pretty quickly. Um, I love my channel so far. I love you guys. I'm so happy to see people that are so supportive and kind to one another and hearing your stories and seeing how many different perspectives and opinions are here in this one place. How amazing is that? So at any rate, feel welcome to leave a comment. If you would like to see more videos from me in the future, go ahead and subscribe and I'll talk to you later.